Greetings goblins, let's talk railroading. The term railroad gets tossed around a lot these days, and I think it gets a needlessly bad rap. But what if I told you railroading really isn't all that bad? I think we've become so afraid of the idea of railroading our party in this hobby that we've misconstrued what that terminology is actually meant to imply. Think about any published adventure or module you've ever participated in. Typically, they all have a set beginning and a somewhat natural end. The middle is where it usually gets a little hazy, but we'll focus on the start and the ending for this video. Without establishing a strong premise for your adventure and a hook that kicks things off, your quest can be dead in the water. The adventure falls apart. It isn't really railroading to give your players and their characters a reason to be invested in the adventure you're running, nor is it railroading to have a satisfying conclusion, whatever that may end up looking like. So what really is railroading? Have you ever been part of a game where it felt like a GM was funneling you towards a specific choice, outcome, or answer, removing any real agency or choice within the game and world? This is what I think people really mean when they say railroading. Railroading isn't putting the party on a train and letting them ride for a bit. Railroad is deciding they can only get off at the stop that you, the GM, want. I think railroading is actually too loose of a term and gives people the wrong impressions about the real issue. It's not that the adventure is on a specific track for a time. That's fine, but to really lean into the analogy, what happens when someone pulls the emergency brake or tries to jump out a window? Do you let them get off there? If not, that's smothering their agency. That's the behavior we want to avoid. I think a much better way to think about this issue are words like repression, constraint, and control. Just look at the definition of the word repress. Subdue someone or something by force. Restrain, prevent, or inhibit the expression or development of something. Suppress a thought, feeling, or desire. I think over time, our hobby has conflated these ideas of repression with parts of a quest that are more narrow in scope. Being on rails is fine, as long as you can switch cars, climb on the roof, or disembark whenever you want. I think the real idea of railroading, suppression, looks more like having only a single way to solve a puzzle or maybe not being able to convince a guard to let you in the gate by any means, or requiring a specific phrase, word, or spell to unlock a secret and solve the mystery. In a game with so many possibilities and outcomes, it feels incongruous to only have a single solution for any problem, antithetical to the spirit of the game. I think this is the real issue our players butt up against, when we narrow the choices they have in any given situation. I've never personally been part of a game where I was mad that the GM dropped a plot hook right in front of us, or one that I was annoyed we had to go to the cult's secret lair to root out their leader. Those are just natural story beats. An inciting incident, a climax, resolution. I mean, how disappointed would we be if Star Wars was just about Luke working on a moisture farm to a ripe old age? Or we get to the end, and the stormtroopers all turned on Vader and the Emperor, leaving the heroes with nothing left to do. You see, it's my belief that adventures have expectations, ones that were established by the promises that set things in motion. You might think of this as an arrival point at the end of a long journey, a railroad. You are headed somewhere and you know somewhat to expect when you get there. If your adventure ends up going down a specific track, that's fine, as long as your players still have options while they're on that track, different ways to solve problems, and agency within the situations they find themselves in. Also, don't feel like everything has to be a sandbox. Maybe the adventure is on a train, and every stop along the way is a mini sandbox. But you don't have to start them at the center of a world and let them go in any conceivable direction Skyrim style. That's a lot of pressure on yourself, and a lot of prep. Sandboxes might be a golden calf in our hobby, but that's probably a topic for another video. Railroading's fine, and sometimes it's even necessary to get things in locomotion. You know, moving in the right direction. See what I did there? Just don't try to control everything and let your hand off the throttle once the wheels get moving. Okay, I'll stop. I think some of these topics get a lot of traction online because they're divisive. They make good headlines, like this video. But the result often ends up being some strange apprehension to what's really a non-issue. So I, I thought I'd shed some light on this misconception and just tell you, it's okay to railroad your party for a time. It's fine to have scripted endings and plots. Just make sure that your NPCs are able to go off script and improvise when the party flips things on their head. Be flexible, but still, you can have a plan. Well, that's all for now. 
Thank you for watching. And if you want to get involved in the giveaway, watch this video here to see how to participate. Thank you guys so much. And if you would leave a like and subscribe, that helps out my channel in a huge way and lets me know that these videos matter. So remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. And though the road be long, we'll weather out the storm. So gather round the fire warm, we'll head for hearth and home. We'll head for hearth and home.